Hello, this is Jason. I'm on my way to the uh, post office, but I'm on my fourth time is a charm. New sandals. Booyah. Check those out. Took me a while to find some sandals that actually didn't destroy my feet. And I still have a band-aid on my toe from the uh, previous sandals that I about cut my toe off. <laughs> so my first pair were the Birkenstocks. Then I got a pair of Teva, like XL something twos. And those kind of didn't feel good and were hurt my toe. And then I got some uh, Chacos and those ones, I thought they'd be nice because they they had like a, it looked like soft cloth around the toes instead of like a harder plastic Velcro. But those ones did the most damage. Those are the ones that about sawed my toe off like a rope, rope burn saw on my toe. So the, these finally are another pair of Tevas, but they have like a, a pad between the straps and the toes and also pad like on the ankle and the heel. So they, I walked three miles in them yesterday and then it started pouring the rain. So I was walking in them soaking wet and they did great. So these are the ones to get if you ask me. And they are kind of expensive new. I think they're $119 on Amazon. And I'll, I'll link them to Amazon in the description below if you, want, if you wanted a new pair. But I got them for $28 bucks on eBay used, but they're like brand new. It didn't have a box, but I mean, you look at them and like still the, like the, the uh, fine details in the bottom of the shoes. You know, like when they make a mold of a shoe or whatever, like it hadn't worn off the fine details where the surface of the shoe is. And me just walking three miles, I've, I've probably done that already by now. So, you know, they were barely worn at all. <clears throat> so nice. I love finding great eBay deals. And it's so windy right now. I got my, uh, oh, my mic here which was turned a weird way, so that all might have sounded weird. <laughs> but I am nothing but professional, so we're just gonna publish it even if it did sound weird with my mic stuck in my chest. And I got my new vest. Let's do a little showroom, showroom look at my vest, the Scotty. Scotty vest. There's a bunch of people at this car wash. Maybe I'll wait till I get up here a little bit till I do my runway model session. <laughs> uh, but I haven't made a video in a while, but I've still been walking. I just, you know, I, I've been enjoying just walking and listening to podcasts listening to music but more more podcasts i've been getting into uh micro strategy which i mentioned in a video thinking about changing out my ira investments from a bitcoin etf a fidelity fbtc etf to just micro strategy stock and I might even buy a multi-year leap option call, like January 2027 expiration date, which if you don't know anything about options, go learn about options before you ever buy an option because you could just end up losing all your money. <laughs> but basically, like a, they call them leap and I forget what the acronym stands for, but basically it's a, a call option that's long into the future, at least a year in the future. And 
I might buy January 2026 or January 2027 option and maybe just one or two of them which would be each option would be about five thousand dollars but that would give you basically it's like getting control of 100 shares of stock for five thousand dollars where if you actually wanted to buy the shares i think they're at 229 dollars so that'd be twenty two thousand dollars it would cost to buy 100 shares and you could get control of 100 shares it's like virtually owning 100 shares just for the period of 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 the option so either t until january 2026 or january 2027 whichever one i decide on getting and And then there's a strike price, so you buy at a certain strike price. There's a lot to it. I'm not going to go into it all now. But basically, it's, it's kind of like a leverage play because you can buy more controls of more shares with a smaller amount of money than you can just out, <coughs> outright buying the shares. But I am going to buy just a bunch of shares of MicroStrategy too instead of a bitcoin spot etf in my ira accounts because you have a expense ratio of like 0.25 percent to own a uh etf and they charge you just to own it whereas owning a stock you can just own the stock outright and there's no expense ratio all right let me show you my vest before we go in here there we go scotty vest so look at this the reason why i bought it or wore it today i got this this on my pocket this thing has like 24 pockets tons of pockets <laughs> This is a eBay return. And then I also made an eBay sale, which is in this pocket. So tons of pockets and I got like my phone in here. I got my camera in here. I got my glasses in here, tons of pockets. And this is what I was gonna use. This, it's kind of like a travel hack that you can use this vest to uh, like put my laptop in here and iPad, a bunch of heavy stuff that when you're getting on a plane, especially in Southeast Asia where the weight limit for a carry-on bag is like 15 pounds and all my electronics weigh like 13 pounds, I can load that all up into this vest and they don't, they don't weigh your coat. So that's what the purpose of this thing is. I just wanted to show you. I'm gonna go in and drop these off and I'm gonna switch cameras. So this is camera one, and you tell me which one looks better, camera one or camera two. So here we go. All right, package dropped off. Now I'm on camera number two. Can you even tell a difference? I think you can tell a difference on a cloudy day like today. I think this would still be considered like low light. And this camera that I'm on right now should be better in low light I'll, I'll tell you which cameras were which at the end because i know the suspense is killing you but you gotta wait you gotta wait till the end to find that out <laughs> uh, so yeah i've been stacking up all kinds of uh gear clothes that i'm gonna need to live in foreign lands around the world. <laughs> and these uh, sandals, I think, are a big piece of the puzzle because a lot of places in Southeast Asia, they have like monsoon seasons, rainy seasons, where you know things get flooded and you don't wanna be walking around with like sneakers and socks. So these are great shoes to wear in 
wet weather. And I, I proved that yesterday walking through, I got, you know, dumped on in the rain. Uh, and this vest is awesome. It'll help me uh, bypass the cheap Asia airline weight restrictions. It's like Air Asia or something. 15 pounds, that's like ridiculous weight limit for a carry-on item. <laughs> but that's just how they make their money. You know, they advertise cheap plane tickets and you buy like a $60 round trip plane ticket and then you show up and they weigh your bag and it weighs 16 pounds and they're like, oh, that's a $100 fee for an overweight bag. You know, I don't know what it actually is, but it's probably like almost doubles the price of the ticket or something. I imagine that's how they lure you in. Cheap tickets and get you with the fees. <clears throat> and it's the same way with like check bags. Even in the United States, like a lot of airlines, you have to pay just to have a check bag. Like I went to just using carry on backpacks like a long time ago, 14 years ago. And it's just so much more convenient. And I did that after the airlines had like lost my bag multiple times. One of my trips to Ohio, you know, I get there for Christmas and like I had all the Christmas, Christmas presents in my suitcase, you know, all my clothes, everything was in my suitcase. And, and it took them like two days to get there. I think, I think it did show up before Christmas. So the, all my presents and stuff got there in time, but it was just a major inconvenience where if you just have a carry-on backpack, you don't have to deal with that. You can't bring as much stuff. Like, I wouldn't have been able to bring all the Christmas presents. And then in, you know, future years, I just had Amazon ship stuff to my grandma's house in Ohio and wrap the presents when I was there. Or just go to the mall and buy presents when I get there. Now we don't even really give each other presents. We'll give presents to, like, the kids. But... We all turned into Scrooges, like Bah Humbug. <laughs> it's nobody, nobody likes any of the presents anyone got for them. Nobody even really knows what anyone likes or wants. <laughs> like my aunt, several times had bought us like a, got us like a, a gas card for uh, like an Ohio gas station. And we lived, at the time I lived in Nebraska, it was like a Sohio gas station. It's like, we don't have a Sohio gas station in Nebraska. Oh, you don't? <laughs> like, it's just an Ohio gas station. <laughs> uh, so things like that. Or at one time, she got us a Bob Evans gift card. We don't, we don't have Bob Evans <laughs> in Nebraska. <sighs> so we just stopped trying. Stop trying. It's all about the kids anyway. So just get the kids presents. And just a bunch of cheap toys. Just, they just care about opening stuff more than they actually care about what's inside. So no matter what toy you get them, they'll play with it for five minutes and it'll go in the pile of, of misfit toys that they never play with ever again. It's just how it goes. Oh. So, yep, that's what I'm playing. I'm still uh, holding Bitcoin in accounts in my individual accounts. It's still, I'm still a proponent of holding Bitcoin, actual Bitcoin, but in accounts that you can't own actual Bitcoin where you can only buy like a Bitcoin ETF. I think that owning MicroStrategy over the next at least year is a better play than owning a Bitcoin ETF because we're just getting ready to go into the Bitcoin bull market and MicroStrategy is like a, a leveraged play on Bitcoin, so you're getting like 2x 
the exposure of, to Bitcoin as you are just buying a spot ETF. So, and it could be even more. It could go up to like 3x. So if like, you know, Bitcoin price doubles, then the MSTR stock, MicroStrategy stock could triple. And, you know, you could get a lot more returns on MicroStrategy within the next year during a bull market, I'm stressing that. And this is not financial advice. Should have said that all at the beginning. <laughs> I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a degenerate doing stuff with my money. But so far, I've done pretty good stuff with my money. Although this is still not financial advice. <laughs> uh, you know, I made good money on Tesla back in the day. And I'm pretty sure that MicroStrategy is the next Tesla, the next NVIDIA. Even, even in the past four years, MicroStrategy has outperformed NVIDIA, which is the best performing tech stock. So, and NVIDIA's market cap's what, like three trillion? And MicroStrategy's uh, market cap is like 45 billion. So, I expect MicroStrategy to be in the S&P 500 by, ne by next year, for one. And they will eventually be a, a one trillion dollar company. They could probably end up being like a, you know, in the top 10 highest market cap companies just from what they're doing with Bitcoin. Because basically what they're doing is using their, because they're a public, publicly listed company and they have access to capital market products that normal people like me and you don't have. They can go take out a loan for like 0.5%. So super low interest rate loan. And so they, they go take out a loan for $500 million at 0.5% that has to be paid back in like 10 years. And then they buy Bitcoin with it. And Bitcoin is returning an average return of like 49% a year. So they just keep doing that over and over. And that's just one thing they do. So, you know, they go take out a loan at a low interest rate. They issue bonds and use the money that they, you know, they sell these bonds, convertible note bonds. And they use that money to buy Bitcoin. And then they could actually use their own stock. So when the price of Bitcoin goes up, the value of their stock goes up. And then they could issue more shares of MicroStrategy, which they use all the money from all the shares that they issue to buy more Bitcoin. So it's like they have all these different issuing bonds, taking out debt at super low interest rates, or just issuing shares of their company to raise capital to get cash to use to buy Bitcoin. And then they have all these options on their stock that it creates higher volatility. So the MicroStrategy stock is more volatile than Bitcoin and Bitcoin in and of itself is volatile. But that volatility, if you could just <laughs> not pay attention to the short term, you know, week by week price movement and look at the returns over the period of months and years it's the the, vol the high volatility creates higher returns <clears throat> so i think they're up like 200 percent year to date where bitcoin's up like i forget 60 80 percent so microstrategy is over doubling the returns of bitcoin even though the underlying asset that they're building these products on is bitcoin 
they just have a leveraged amount of Bitcoin per share because of all of the money that they're raising to buy Bitcoin in the way that they're doing it. And there's a bunch of people that are way smarter than me <laughs> in a group called like MicroStrategy True North. Google that. You'll find them on X. I think they have a YouTube channel. Listen to all the stuff they're talking about. This dude named uh, Punter Jeff. Go look at, he has a video that explains, you know, MicroStrategy and what they're doing and where they're gonna be in the future. And, and once the, the, they're gonna be listed soon in like the NASDAQ, whatever it is, 1000 or, I think they're the 264th biggest company right now. So they're gonna get listed on these indexes, which first will be the NASDAQ one. And then so when in, all the people that own the NASDAQ ETF, once it gets listed, that ETF has to go out and buy MicroStrategy to get it to the weight in the index that it's allocated at by its market cap. And so once they do that, they'll get hundreds of millions of dollars more money and they'll take that money and they'll go buy more Bitcoin, which will cause the price of their stock to go up, which will allow them to issue more convertible notes, bonds, which will raise more money to buy more Bitcoin, which they could use to issue more shares to buy more Bitcoin. So all these different things, it's just a loop. Every Everything that causes the stock price to go up gives them access to more money to buy more Bitcoin. And right now they're a $45 billion market cap company and they've announced in their last earnings call that in the next three years, they're gonna buy $45 billion more worth of Bitcoin. <clears throat> so they're gonna buy their whole market cap in Bitcoin in the next three years. And so that alone is gonna double the value of their stock if that's all they did. <clears throat> but the price of Bitcoin's going up. So if the price of Bitcoin from here goes up, you know, doubles, then that'll allow them to buy double that amount of Bitcoin. So they've already owned like 1% of all the Bitcoin in the world, and they're gonna end up owning two, 3% by the time it's all over. <clears throat> they have 242,000 Bitcoin right now. And the, by the end of the next three years, they'll probably have 500,000 Bitcoin. You know, it depends on the price of Bitcoin. And then, you know, they're just gonna keep buying. They're gonna buy forever and keep doing this. Loop, loop, loop in perpetuity, issuing bonds, issuing shares, taking out super low interest rate loans and using all that money to buy Bitcoin, which Bit the value of Bitcoin goes up, then they do it again. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Again, not financial advice. I'm gonna be buying MicroStrategy to hold in my IRAs where I can't buy Bitcoin itself. Because even though I could buy MicroStrategy in like my individual accounts, those I have to pay taxes on when I sell. Where like in my Roth IRA, I never have to pay taxes on anything in there. So if next year before the bear market, which will be in like 2026, towards the end of 2026, 2027, you know, the price of Bitcoin could be cut in half in that year. <clears throat> So before that, I'll probably sell out of MicroStrategy in my IRAs and then take all those profits and I won't have to pay taxes, no capital gains taxes because it's in a Roth IRA. So, but my Bitcoin, I'll probably just hold that forever. I won't sell it even when it inevitably goes down after it goes up, you know, I'm just gonna hold it, hold it through the whole roller coaster. <clears throat> so, that's what I've been thinking about. What have you been thinking about? Let me know in the comments down below. And also camera two that I'm on right now is the OnePlus, not the OnePlus, <laughs> the Pocket 3 
the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, and camera one was the DJI Action 5 Pro. And I'm using the DJI Mic 2 connected to both of them. <clears throat> so your uh, suspense can be quenched. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and talk to you later. Take it easy.